For today's EMN5, I'd like to talk about Lemire syndrome. This can be a pretty tricky diagnosis with a high mortality, so it's something to keep on your differential to kind of rule out in your mind anytime someone comes in with a sore throat or any kind of complication from it. So let's start with a case to demonstrate a typical presentation. You have an otherwise healthy 19-year-old female who presents originally to her primary care doctor for a few days of sore throat, fever. So when her strap comes back negative, she's diagnosed with a likely viral pharyngitis and sent home with symptom control. However, about four days later, she presents back to the ER or her primary looking slightly toxic with a fever, still having a lot of throat pain, now a little bit more right-sided than left, also having difficulty swallowing and a cough, it looks a little dehydrated. So at this point, with the difficulty swallowing and the throat pain, you get a soft tissue foam PA lateral of the neck, which in this case is unremarkable. Because of the cough and the fever, you also decide to get a chest x-ray, and this shows some significant findings, several ill-defined nodular opacities within the right lower lobe and retrocardiac region. And now we start getting kind of suspicious for some kind of septic emboli causing these bilateral infiltrates. And with her history of the unilateral sore throat, Lemire's is starting to come to the top of our differential. So to confirm this, we get a CT scan of the neck with contrast, and sure enough, it shows a, an occlusion of the right IJ, and there is our diagnosis of Lemire's. So just to give a very gross overview of this, Lemire starts out as some kind of oropharyngeal primary infection, whether it's pharyngitis, tonsillitis, some kind of PTA, a dental infection, or even mono. That then results in spread from that primary infection into the soft tissues, which then leads to a platelet aggregation in the adjacent IJ caused by bacterial endotoxins. You end up getting a thrombus there, which then throws off septic emboli all over the rest of the body. The reason this is significant is because it has a very high mortality. Historically, it was around 90%, and today it still carries a 10 to 15% mortality, which in a young, otherwise healthy patient is pretty concerning. Lemire's is considered one of the deep space neck infections, and it's something to consider anytime you have a deep space neck infection on your differential. Specifically, it involves the parapharyngeal space. So you can see here's your tonsils, and just adjacent to that is the parapharyngeal space. And in Lemire's specifically, it penetrates the carotid sheath and that's where things get a little scary. Inside there you have the IJ, the internal carotid, some cranial nerves and also lymph nodes. That can easily lead to bacteremia. You can also get that clot formation caused by the exotoxins that I talked about which then results in septic emboli. The most common in Lemire's is to the lungs, the liver, the endocardium, and also joints. So let's talk about the features of Lemire's syndrome. Initially you start out with your primary infection. So a patient has a history of some kind of neck or throat pain, tends to have unilateral symptoms, can, can be complaining of dysphagia, fever, chills, malaise. Next thing to watch out for is any kind of cough, dyspnea, pleuritic chest pain, hemoptysis. That's because 97% of Lemire's patients end up having a pulmonary septic emboli. And like I said, look out for symptoms such as arthralgias, jaundice, any kind of focal neuro symptoms or altered mental status that could indicate septic emboli elsewhere. As far as diagnostics, for the initial primary infection and also the thrombus of the IJ, CT neck with contrast, and also ultrasound of the neck can be diagnostic. So here's an example of a normal IJ. And remember, we're really good at looking at this in the ER. We look at IJs all the time for central lines, so you should really be well aware of what this anatomy looks like. And over here you can see you have some clot, a lot of soft tissue swelling, and even some surrounding edema around that IJ. And CT scan like we saw before, in this case it's on the left side. Here you can see that that's clotted off. As far as the pulmonary emboli, chest x-ray or CT chest can show it. And then just think about where else your septic microemboli are going, things like EKGs, you might see a transaminitis or thrombocytopenia, a prolonged PT if it goes to the liver, and also think about any kind of septic joints and of course if you have positive blood cultures. So as far as the microbiology for Lemire syndrome, the big board's word answer is the fusiform bacteria. And part of the controversy in treating patients with the dose of penicillin for a positive center criteria, even if they have a negative rapid strep, is that you're treating for fusiform and therefore preventing Lemire's disease. Other bacteria you see are oral anaerobes, echinella, strep pyogenes, and bacteroides. Now if this is an ICU patient who has an IJ catheter, 
Think about staph or strep. So to treat Lemire's disease, either flagell or clindo to cover for the anaerobes, or you can do a penicillin plus beta-lactamase inhibitor. And if it is catheter associated, make sure you add vancomycin to cover for your staph and strep. Now what about anticoagulating this clot? Well, that's pretty controversial. The recommendations I could find basically said, consider case-by-case -case basis, try to think about how far that clot's extending, and if the patient's gonna be going for some kind of surgical debridement anyway. So when do you need to think about Lemire's? You have a young, otherwise healthy adult, mean age is actually around 20, some kind of recent pharyngitis or oral pharyngeal or dental infection, usually within the last week, and then having persistent symptoms or possibly even sepsis. Think about it anytime you have a patient with unilateral neck pain or throat pain, and anytime you're thinking of any deep space infection of the throat, throw Lemire's on your list, try to think about how you're going to rule it out in your mind. And remember, watch out for the septic emboli. 97% of patients have some kind of septic emboli to the lungs. So takeaway for this, Lemire's is a thrombophlebitis of the IJ with carotid sheath invasion. Recent history of pharyngitis, and this results in septic emboli. Remember, 97% have a pulmonary involvement. And this is caused by fusiform bacteria. Here are the references, and thanks for joining us on EMN5.